The next step in our trigonometric substitution, once we have the triangle labeled correctly, is we make two choices. A friend of mine that uh, sat in on my class one time, an instructor, called this is the choose choose. And so uh, I have a, a former colleague who uh, is in, if, if, I, if, I, if she lives in uh, Chattanooga, Tennessee, and if she were doing this, that would be the, uh, the Chattanooga choose choose. But enough of that. So uh, the next procedure is this. So here's my, here's my little example I'm going to play through here. I have the square root of x squared. I have minus 25 over x dx. All right. What's going to happen is label the triangle, make some choices, and then this is going to be turned into a trigonometric integral from the previous section, and then you simply, well, simply, hopefully, proceed as before. So, number one, label the triangle. As soon as you recognize you have the radical and difference of squares, or uh, uh, difference or sum of squares, then this is a trigonometric substitution. So can we label this triangle? This, I hope, is becoming part of your uh, mental furniture here. Uh, since it's subtraction, the hypotenuse is the square root of the first. Put as much variable as you can muster here. And then whatever is left over, that becomes the horizontal. And now, choose, number one, choose from the perspective of theta, and that's why I'm always putting theta in the lower left, from the perspective of theta, from the perspective of this angle, choose the trigonometric function that does two things. It does not involve the radical. Choose the function that does not involve the radical. Well, we could choose cosine. Cosine is 5 over x. Or we could choose secant. Secant is x over 5, hypotenuse over adjacent. So you choose the function that does not involve the radical, and here it is, wait for it, it keeps the variable in the numerator. I want the variable in the numerator. You'll see why here in a little bit. So we, want the we don't want 5 over x, I want x over 5. So from the perspective of theta, we choose secant theta. That's the function that has those two requirements. It does not involve the radical, and it keeps the variable, I'm sorry, it keeps the variable in the numerator. Secant theta is x over 5, and then move the constant over. All right? In this first, the, 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 the rationale for this first choose is we need to take everything in this problem that's in, in the X language and translate it into the theta language. Now, every problem in the X language always has two things. It might have more, but it always has two things. One thing it has is this radical. Because if it didn't have the radical, we wouldn't be doing this trigonometric substitution in the first place. So it always has a radical. And it always has a dx. If it doesn't have this dx, then the problem's not written correctly. The problem's not a, a well-stated problem. So you know it has dx, and that's really the... It may or may not have this x in here. This, we're, what we're doing here would be exactly the same even if this x is not present. Because we know dx is present, and you need to find x. If nothing else, you need to find x as a stepping stone to get to the differential. We take the derivative, we need, we know we need to have dx. What's the derivative of the left-hand side? The derivative of the left-hand side is five secant theta tangent theta d theta. Just like any other substitution, you have to find the differential and the differential of x is dx. So you know dx must be there because if dx isn't in the problem, it's not even present. There might or might not be other x's hanging around the problem. In this case, there is, but even if there weren't, you would still need to go down this procedure because you know dx is in the problem. That's choose number one. Choose number two. 
And you would do this, it doesn't matter what town in Tennessee you're working on, even, even if this is not the Chattanooga choose, choose. You would do the same process. You still need to make these same two choices. This next rule is this. Choose the trigonometric function from the perspective of theta. That does involve the radical. We want the one that does involve the radical and no variables in denominator. We could choose sine. Sine would be radical over x. No, no x in the variables in denominator. We could choose, we could choose uh, a cotangent. Cotangent would be adjacent over opposite. No, that would be a denominator. The only function that meets those two requirements does involve the radical and had no variables in denominator, in this case, is tangent. Tangent of theta is radical over 5. Move the 5 across, clear the fraction. And as soon as you have that radical found, that's when you know these two choices are complete. Now the substitution is exact. As soon as you have dx located and the radical located, the substitution is exact because everything else substitutes in. So what we generate from here is, what is the radical? The radical is, the radical is 5 tangent theta. So now that's accounted for. We also have an x in denominator. What is x? x is, where's x? x is sitting right here. This is 5 secant, eh, we're at it better, secant theta. And now that's accounted for. What's left, and this is the part that students often forget, is the dx. This is in the theta language. That needs to be in the theta language also. dx, which is why we did this first column, dx is this whole great big mess, 5 secant theta tangent, not secant squared, 5 secant theta tangent theta d theta. Remember that the differential values, the differential values, this is all numerator. The differential is all numerator, unless it's an explicit denominator. Typically, the, the, uh, the, the differential is numerator value, except in special kinds of problems. So, now simplify the C. Secant cancels with secant. This 5 cancels with one of the 5s. And so what we're left with in this scenario is 5, which you may, if you like, put in front of the radical, or integral rather, tangent squared. d theta, and now proceed as before in the previous section. Proceed as before in the previous section. That's the process. Integral, you recognize trig substitution, label the triangle. Choose the part, the, the two rules, choose the function that does not involve the radical and no variables in denominator, in this case that's secant, and use that to form x if needed, and for sure you need to find the differential. And then you choose the function that does involve the radical, but no variables in denominator. In this case, that's tangent. If you always label the triangle in this orientation, if you always label the triangle with variable vertical, if you always label that, remember when we did trig, uh, trigonometric integrals, secant was almost always uh, paired up with tangent, and that's what's going to happen. Sine is almost always paired up with cosine. That's what's going to happen. If you follow these labeling conventions, it will lead you down the path of these familiar integrals. And then substitute the values, simplify, and now proceed as before. So what we'll do on the next, uh, next video is I'm going to go back and start this entire problem from scratch and see if we can work it the whole way down.